we will discuss evolves a sphere construction this is a beautiful construction to answer an important question the question is what are the directions of diffracted beams from a crystal for a given direction of incident beam let's look at it suppose this is a crystal specimen and an x ray is shining in this particular direction as shown by the arrow here so the question is for this particular direction of the incident beam and this beam is of a particular wavelength and the crystal is shown here with its periodicity what are the directions of the diffracted beam of course to answer such question we have the diffraction condition in terms of bragg's law lambda is equal to 2d sin theta here lambda is the wavelength but d is the interplanar spacing and theta is the angle of incidence of the x ray on that plane as yet i have not shown any plane there are many possible planes which can be drawn or which exist in a given crystal so one particular set of plane i have now shown for this plane the spacing d is equal to d1 as shown here and the angle of incidence of the beam with the plane is theta1 so we have to check whether this interplanar spacing d1 and this angle theta1 satisfies the bragg's law lambda is equal to 2d sin theta so we have to check whether lambda is equal to 2d1 sin theta1 if it is equal to this if this relationship is right then we will have a diffracted beam and the diffracted beam will appear to be reflected from this set of planes this is what is bragg's law if we don't satisfy this relationship then there will be no diffracted beam so we have answered the question but we have answered the question partially partially because we have answered it only for one set of planes a crystal has many in fact infinitely many sets of planes so for another set of plane we have to again apply bragg's law here i am showing another set of plane in green now the interplanar spacing changes to d2 and the angle of incidence also changes to theta2 so with this changed value of d and theta i'll again have to apply bragg's law to see if there is a diffracted beam or not so bragg's law can answer the question which we posed but then you can see it will be a tedious process of checking plane after plane this is where evolved came in and he solved the problem by taking it from the direct space from the real space shown here to the reciprocal space so let us look at his solution so in the reciprocal space there is an incident wave vector ki a wave vector is a vector which is in the direction of the incident wave and whose length is 1 by the wavelength of the wave now let us say that the tail of this vector is at c and the head is at o with the same tail c let us try to draw the diffracted wave vector kd so cp is the diffracted wave vector kd so ki and kd are sharing the same tail c but ki has its head at o and kd has its head at p of course we actually don't know the direction of kd but still we know something about kd the fact that because the scattering is elastic the wavelength of the scattered wave wavelength of the diffracted wave is same as the wavelength of the incident wave this is the assumption of elastic scattering under these condition kd and ki will have the same length equal to 1 by lambda since they have the same length one thing we know about kd is that if i draw a sphere 
if I draw a sphere with center at C and radius at 1 by lambda, KD will end somewhere on this sphere. The head of KD, the point P, has to lie somewhere on this sphere. Of course, I have drawn a circle here on in the plane of the screen. You have to complete the sphere in your imagination by adding a hemisphere be below the screen and a an hemisphere above, above the screen. Now, we have to find out actually the direction. Currently, we have drawn this vector CP. We have drawn the vector KD arbitrarily. We are not claiming that CP actually is a direction, a diffracted, diffracted beam direction. How do I find that? To find that, of course, we again have to use Bragg's law, but we will use Bragg's law in reciprocal space. This has been discussed in another video, the link for which I have shared in the description below. Here, we just summarize the result. For looking at Bragg's law in reciprocal space, we need to construct the difference of KD and KI, the scattering wave vector delta K, which is KD minus KI, shown in blue here, from O to P. Now, Bragg's law in reciprocal space states that this vector delta K has to be a reciprocal lattice vector G star HKL for some crystal lattice plane HKL for some <laughs> integers HKL which means G star HKL is H A1 star plus K A2 star plus L A3 star where A1 star A2 star and A3 star are reciprocal basis vectors. So this is interesting that this delta K is also a reciprocal lattice vector G star HKL, which means I have not yet drawn the reciprocal lattice of my crystal, so I am free to choose the origin. And if I choose the origin at O, the red dot shown here, so if I choose the origin at O, then and fill the space with reciprocal lattice points, then P will also be one of the reciprocal lattice point if CP is a diffracted wave vector. So let me fill the space with reciprocal lattice points and we see that P is one of the reciprocal lattice point. So the reverse is also true that whenever a reciprocal lattice point lies on the evolved sphere, we will get a diffracted wave in that direction. So for example, another point Q, Q shown here is also lying on the evolved sphere. So I'll get another diffracted beam for the same incident wave vector. So CQ will also be a diffracted wave. Of course, we are again reminding you that this is a two-dimensional section which we are drawing. The real sphere, the real evolved sphere is in 3D and there can be diffracted beams out of this plane shown here also. Now, let me show you the equivalence of this construction to the standard Bragg's law. This is not difficult to show. All I have to do is to drop a perpendicular CN on OP. If I do that, notice that OP is the reciprocal lattice vector G star HKL. So its length OP is simply one by DHKL where DHKL is the interplanar spacing of the plane HKL. So OP is 1 by DHKL and ON by geometry is half of OP and so it is 1 by 2 DHKL. We can now see that CN is perpendicular to OP and we know that the reciprocal lattice vector is perpendicular 
to the corresponding direct lattice plane. So since Cn is perpendicular to G star HKL, Cn is parallel to the direct lattice plane HKL. Which means the angle between Cn and CO, the incident wave vector, is the incident Bragg angle theta. Now I can use the triangle CON to find sine theta as ON by CO, which is equal to 1 by 2 dHKL by 1 by lambda. If I simplify this, you get the Bragg's law lambda is equal to 2 dHKL sine theta. So what we are showing here that the condition that the reciprocal lattice point P lies on the evolved sphere is equivalent to the condition that the corresponding plane HKL satisfies Bragg's law in direct space. So the evolved sphere construction in reciprocal space is exactly and entirely equivalent to Bragg's law in direct space. So let us summarize the evolved sphere construction now. The steps are we first begin with the reciprocal lattice space with its origin O and draw the incident wave vector Ki as CO with, with its head at the origin of the reciprocal space. We then use the tail of Ki C as a center of a sphere and we draw a sphere of radius 1 by lambda. This is the evolved sphere. And then we check whether any reciprocal lattice point lie on the evolved sphere. For any reciprocal lattice point P lying on the evolved sphere, we get a diffracted beam in the direction CP from the center of the evolved sphere to the reciprocal lattice point. So this is a beautiful construction. This is one of the most beautiful results in the diffraction theory and we thank Evolve for this and I thank you for listening. Thank you very much.